Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. We're going to be talking about Portia Williams, Family Matters, The Pursuit of Portia. Yes, I got her book yesterday in the mail. It came in and I have been through oh, one or two chapters, but we're going to just start with chapter one that I deem because her book is so elementary. She didn't have like... She had a contact list, but a, a t contents list, but she didn't put it like chapter one, my life, chapter two, da da dee, da da da, you know, whatever. Like it comes in um, some books. She just has chapter one through chapter 11. And I deemed it to give some structure. Chapter one is basically talking about her mother uh, and her business and blaming others. For her childhood or you can see it like through Portia's childlike eyes her perception of her life growing up as a child okay and I gave y'all a lot of visuals to look at to see you got mama what her name is the grandmama back there watching her daughter act the food and Portia act the food together but like I said birds of a flock, flock, flock together we don't know what grandmama meaning Diane's mom did for some change to get some strange things what she did in her lifetime to put Miss Diane and Portia's aunt Darlene out there like strolling if you know what I mean so um Portia goes on to say in a special note from the author uh, to protect the privacy of loved ones and other people whom I've met and would rather forget. Some names have been changed. Others have been erased. And I'm like, but you're saying this is your life. This is your book. This is you. But you don't want to give all the facts. And I found it very, very disturbing. And I just said, okay, let me just pick through what I want to discuss that I felt was kind of disturbing. Um, in chapter one. Okay. She goes into a scenario where she has already saw herself as a guest host of some sorts. And she's pretty much, it's role playing in her mind. Um, and she's filming herself or she's making like she's being filmed in front of the cameras. And her audience is her uh, plush animals or stuffed animals. And she's going through her mother's closet having a fake show of accessories being shown and she's basically selling them uh and, and ex explaining to her audience which is her baby dolls and her stuffed animals that they, she only has like a few items left a hundred dollars or a hundred items left and then they'll be totally sold out okay <laughs> and she gives us an idea of where her childhood home is by letting us know um her mother's house was on camera and close. Now, I do have some pictures of some homes. I'm not that interested in trying to find Portia's mother's house. I could. It'd very, be very easy to do so. But I just choose not. But I gave y'all some similarities of the houses. Um, images of the houses that go around in that particular subdivision. Okay? That y'all can kind of guess or imagine which house is Portia Williams's mother um, like I said I just gave you houses I don't know if one of those houses were hers where she grew up in or not um, but I just gave y'all the listing of different house structures that were in that particular neighborhood that she was talking about that her mom house reside in okay and it's sad that because at a tender age of, I want to say, maybe 8 to 10 or 12, she always cherished uh, the dreams and stardom to some capacity of wanting to be a part of the entertainment business. Now, she talks about when she was 2 to 3 years old, which I can't even remember unless somebody showed me pictures, and then I probably couldn't still remember then. Of being the age of two and two or three years old and, and remembering stuff that way back when now when you get she's talking about playing in front of the cameras at two and three years old 
in acting uh like she was on a show selling um accessories and goods that she got out of her mother's closet and and trying to sell them to her viewers and then it jumps straight to 12 years old where she goes into saying where um she didn't like sharing a split home with her mom and dad she said during the week she would spend time with her mom and on the weekends she would go and see her dad and she said i was two or three years old now how she remember that i don't know uh, then she talks about her room and it having a bay window and her basically deeming that her safe haven her safe place then she goes into talking about now i'm guessing we're jumping into her 12 years old stage where she's in school and she don't like her physical appearance she's flat chested she's skinny she got big eyes she looks like a stick just hateful words pretty much that most kids get called out about and have the time when it's a, a male doing it at the time they like them they just don't know how to act towards saying i like you you know what i'm saying you're not like a regular dude i know you're pris prim and you're soft and all that stuff but you know what i'm saying but that's how things happen when you're in elementary school middle school and high school uh men or young boys tend to get somewhat together by their sophomore year in high school um and then while others they just stay clueless but you know she was upset about her looks and she was calling herself lame because the kids were pretty much calling her lame and um She's comparing herself from where she was at 12 years old f to where she is now. And she's having many or millions of people watching her through the same camera lens that she f pictured herself when she was just two and three years old. Okay, uh, filming uh, her own little talk show where she was selling goods. Okay, and she's wanting us to understand her. And uh, understand her triumphs, her heartbreaks, and her mistakes. And um, she seems like she's more so a rebel when she's in middle school. Uh, and it was Chapel Hill Middle School in Decatur. Uh, I gave y'all pictures of the school. And it was predominantly black, of course. And uh, I really thought she had went to the pristine Chapel Hill Harvester Church, which was... The, uh, I think I gave y'all a picture of the church outside and in the inside. Very lucrative place. Though That's the type of mansion that um, Portia alluded to wanting to have one day. We know she has her Duluth estate. But, you know, we don't leave that, we don't leave that long for now. And uh, she's supposed to be moving into Sandy Springs area uh, of Atlanta. Not Buckhead. I don't know why they keep saying Buckhead because it's not Buckhead. But it's Sandy Springs area. It's a whole nother different uh, commercial line in a whole different other county. But it just is what it is. But, um, like I said, I thought she went to one of the private schools since her legacy is so well pronounced in the Atlanta area. But I guess the dad is just doing the feeling it and he felt his kids could go to regular school. And which it seemed like they did. I don't know if Lauren went to private school or not, but Chapel Hill Harvester is like a branched off uh, school from the church that's like private entity, like a you know a Catholic school that's in the church or whatnot. That's how Ch Chapel Hill Harvester Church is here in Atlanta or in Ellenwood, Georgia, or Decatur, Georgia. All of just mush the same in a sense. It was like five minutes apart from each other, but um, depending on what end of the area you're on. But I was surprised about that. Because I was like, okay. So, some of the kids in the pristine Jose Williams clan go to certain aspects of getting certain education. And the others don't. So, that showed a lot. Uh, but that does happen. Of course, it's not an isolated case. You know, sometimes the parent that leaves and go get another family. They tend to treat that family a little bit better than what they treated their initial family. And, uh, you know... Feelings are hurt. Words are strong about. Not for the good. But Portia was basically saying she was a loner. Uh, during this time she didn't like school. She didn't care to excel in anything. She just didn't pay attention. 
and that's most uh, troubled teens. Uh, they have the uh, capacity to aspire to do well, but when they don't use it, they lose it in a sense. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you know about schools. Teachers are only going to be bothered with the ones that they really care for. And that may be a biased statement, but I know. Because I know my child is going to get treated right because I was always up there. I was always at PTA meetings. I was always at the conferences. If you didn't know who I was, you eventually figured it out before that first semester was over. Okay? So, and when you're in front of the, the teachers, you're in front of the student body, you're being very active, your kid won't get uh, pushed over by no means. Uh, necessary because every time my daughter elevated to another level in school I made sure I knew the teachers the counselors was the principal still active the secretaries the support staff I knew them okay and they knew me so it just you, you pretty much have to be in your child's life and from what I gather from chapter one Portia really wasn't she calls herself an introvert meaning a person that and that's her brother too and he's big, and, and he need to be out there ha handling his sister and her issues, you know. But again, that's Jose Williams, the um, third, I believe. Or is it the second? Yeah, we might be the second. I don't know, but um, that's Lauren's half-brother. But that's Diane's son, um, and that's Portia's, you know, biological, from the same mother, uh, brother. And this is the one she definitely used to prank a lot. In her book that she's telling us in chapter one. Uh, I don't know why Diane shielded him. More so from the fame. The spotlight. And put Portia out there front and center. And it just may be their per different personalities. He's just not with the shits. He's just not with none of that. What Portia's trying to put herself into. He must be the quiet silent type. But the, that's a, that or them. Uh, when they were younger. And I guess he was a part of their family at the time. But for some reason, somehow, we don't know yet. Maybe Diana come and tell us why they separated. Why did Portia feel like she lost both of her parents when that decision was made. That they were going to be going their separate ways. Don't understand. Okay. But Portia said by her being an introvert, it ruined her a lot. With being sociable with other people in this, that, and the third. Her brother's supposed to be two years older than her, so I don't understand why uh, she felt like she couldn't talk to her brother. Because most ki uh, kids that are kind of close uh, in age range together, they kind of do sit and talk and have conversations. And with her brother being that damn big, tall, I didn't see why she was having any problems making friends or being a part of things at school activities or just opening up, period. You know, she's showing us all of this stuff, but she didn't do anything um, worthwhile in middle school or elementary. She wasn't in any plays or anything. So, it seems like uh, she didn't want to do anything. and She pretty much was listening to uh, slow jams all the time, Jodeci, and getting into the familiar ways of learning about her sexuality. Okay, which at 12 years old, I guess you start to feel a little different. Because I think most of the time, 12 years old is when the, uh, the young ladies get their menstrual cycle. And their hormones are raging. And they don't have any capacity of knowing what the hell is going on with them. Even though they do have PSAs, personal service announcements in school. Teaching them about safe sex, their bodies, their hormones. What it feels like, what it looks like, what it could be like. Um, training classes or uh, classes that are being taught about that same thing for the men as well or the boys they get that same training I don't know if it's in physical ed or health education but they do have classes that teach us all about our bodies and what to expect as each year progresses for us but um, She claims that she mostly was a tomboy. She liked hanging around her brother. The people in the neighborhood knew them as the Jose Williams kids. And with this, that, and the third. And I guess that was supposed to have been something big for them. That they had that type of legacy on them. But yet, they were shunned from that side of the family. Which is very interesting. 
And Portia didn't really put that in her book, at least not in chapter one, that she felt so miserably about being a part of a civil rights movement and having uh, people in her family that act actually were active activists. But yet, she speaks nothing about them in chapter one as her memory will allow her to, uh, to speak of. She said she was obsessed about her brother. She cherished her brother, honey. Uh, and it seems like the obsession didn't fall too far because she f said her mother was obsessed with her um, son too, as well as their dad on their dad's side, because he was more so Dean King in both sides of the family. Uh, and I thought, like, okay, all right, that's probably where the downfall went. They should have been enamoring both of you all instead of one of you all. So I guess they just saw Portia somebody look cute, but wasn't worth time um, trying to cultivate and learn her more about their history and what they were trying to do for the black community or minorities, period. But she claimed she was a prankster and this, that, and third, okay. Um, then she goes into talking about her deep depression, her pain, or what she felt was her pain and her depression. And, um, you know, she considered, uh, her mother to be her best friend. And she wanted to really end her life. But then she was pretty much like, I can't do all this because I wouldn't have my mom. And my mom would suffer by not having me. And then she was saying that the only thing she really feared was becoming brain dead. And I'm like, Portia, if you held a whole bottle of pills in your uh hand thinking you're gonna throw them down your throat you should have been just thinking about dying not oh you're gonna be living but you're gonna be brain dead i mean I, I didn't understand your clarification but again you were 12 years old at the time i'm thinking but if you have a clear rationalization of picking up pills trying to end your life and then thinking about the side effects where if you didn't end your life or the pills didn't end your life you could come brain dead shows me you had the opportunity to think right, do right, and act accordingly. You just chose to not do it. Being selfish. Okay? Um, so it's more so you were trying to play the role of a suicide victim, but you had no real rationale of wanting to go ahead with the deed. So I'm like, mm, don't play with that portion. I wouldn't even bring this episode back up in your book. Because it's like, you're saying... Kids know, and they don't have an outlet, so they just go on and do it. Or they have an outlet, they can test the waters and see if it does come up where they can survive. I mean, what are you playing Russian roulette over that portion? Or were you playing Russian roulette with other people's kids or something? I'm just trying to figure that all out. Then you go on and talk about, you could have told your mother, but you didn't want to worry your mother with such pettiness. And I'm like, okay, from there and then on... You're saying your mother is trying to keep y'all in the house that maybe her dad put her in or y'all dad put her in. And then he just had to pay child support if indeed he did do that. Because you really don't express that in this chapter one either. But he may have had your mom in one of them nice houses. And then she had to find means to help support keeping that house. So you're saying she uh, was your friend. She was a boss. She owned a daycare center or learning center in atlanta georgia educating hundreds of children you even go so far to say um she was the cfo ceo and secretary or whatever okay i'm like what okay uh but you're saying your mother had all this time to put forth in other people's children but she didn't find the time and to put forth a good effort in learning you and your brother about your feelings and what you are feeling and that she had came and got you one day and felt that she needed to have a conversation more so with you and your brother about talking to someone so you're saying one way you're saying she didn't understand or you didn't want to bother her but on the other hand you're saying just because she was living a boss life running around here being a ceo cfo you know driving nice cars living in nice homes caring for other people that she didn't have time for y'all. So which one is it, Portia? I, you know, it's, you're not making yourself make sense. But then you're saying, 
you didn't want your mom to feel like she had failed y'all as a single mom and somehow upset her uh, with the life that she had been trying to give y'all that you had to mask up yourself to make you feel like you were doing it for her but you didn't want to break down or be a disappointment to her to say all the stuff she was doing providing for y'all making sure y'all have a good life wasn't working because you were miserable and you couldn't have that conversation with her okay all right then portia goes in to talk about um she was called upon to go to what do you call it uh, upscale parties or up what she calls them upfront parties where they go and meet with other advertisers to endorse their show for upcoming seasons and get to talk with them network pretty much a, a casting couch party it, it seems like to me uh wanting y'all to do more things for some strange wanting y'all to do strange things for some more change in other words to make things a little bit more heated a little bit more entertaining they were setting the stage for y'all to do more obscene type gestures and at the point of time Portia was feeling like it was just going to be her on the show. But to her surprise, you know, Portia, it is other people out there. And other cast members on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She was greeted at the same party with NeNe Leake showing up, Cynthia Bailey. And they were all watch, uh, walking the blue carpet, she calls it, of notoriety. And she goes in to talk about poor uh, Lauren was with her and... Uh, on the rare copy because I think Lauren was her assistant at the time and she called herself uh, being with Portia through all these different episodes of going to partake of the party she had to go and do press with for the Real Housewives of Atlanta and they were discussing you know her and Cordell split and she was blindsided and she had to answer some questions from the who's who because they was asking her about it and she was going back and forth to the bathroom, uh, upset, and Lauren was trying to pretty much tell her, you know, everything's going to be okay, this, that, and the third, because evidently Lauren's mom did the responsible thing and got her daughter some help, okay? Got her daughter some help and um, got her hooked up with psychologists and all this, and Lauren was being the dutiful younger sister trying to tell Portia everything's going to be all right, what she's feeling is depression. She's quite a, a familiar with it because that's what she suffers from. And anxiety and all this, that, and the third. And I'm like, oh, look at Lauren stepping in and showing up and showing out. But again, it's always two sides to a story. Because Portia, in that whole fame of promoting her mother was this, that, and the third. Did she tell y'all? She didn't tell us in chapter one. But did y'all know that Portia mom diane got her daycare foreclosed on okay and it was behind a very mysterious death that happened on uh diane's watch when she was pretty much the owner and the cef the cfo chi uh, chief financial officer ceo uh chief executive officer and secretary of the corporation okay these are the titles empty titles you i should tell you all uh to get your ass in trouble one day if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it and when you're taking care of other people's kids whether it's a eight hour job 12 hour job or a 24 hour job you better make sure you're fresh you re you revitalize and you got the decency to take care of somebody else's children because they might well be your children because when shit go down, you're going to wish they were your children. Because they're going to try to take you for in and everything. Especially when a child dies in your custody. Now, did y'all know that um, Portia Williams' mom were being sued because of this incident? Alright? It was an incident. If you don't know, look it up on, uh, what do you call it? The internet. Look at one particular one. It says Portia's being sued over alleged loan dispute. And that was dated in 2015. Uh, a child died in the custody of Diane's daycare. Uh, his name was, what was his name? Uh, Daryl Love. Uh, he was two years old. He died while in the care of Child First Child Care in 2009. 
which happens to be Diane Williams' Portia Williams' mom daycare. And all this stuff has been circulating from 2009 on up to 2017. Okay. But they say Diane was worth over a million. She's an entrepreneur. She had her own daycare business at the age of 30. Or she was in, I'm, t I'm sorry, she was uh, in business. No, I'm sorry. She was 30 years old while she was in uh, having her first entity of a daycare business, which was a 24-hour rent establishment. But let me just tell you how it came to be that Diane pretty much allegedly became unemployed. Okay? It says, uh, Portia Williams is being sued over alleged loan dispute related to a daycare center that she owns in Decatur, Georgia, which she didn't own. It was her mother, remember? Um, the company was Apex Bank filed a lawsuit against Williams and Child First 24-Hour Care. Child Care on October 28th of 2015 in DeKalb County, Georgia Superior Court for allegedly defaulting on a loan. According to the court documents, the very same daycare center was previously hit with another lawsuit after a three-month-old died on the premises, according to a lawsuit filed in 2011. This was Diane's daycare, remember? An infant boy named Daryl Love II died while in the care of Child First Child Care in 2009. The child died on the very first day that he was entrusted to the care of the facility after being left alone while staff members went to lunch. Child First denies... Um, any wrongdoing in the boy's death. And of course they're going to deny it. Because guess what happened? They did a civil lawsuit. Which forced the closing of Miss Diane's daycare. Alrighty. Uh, the center was not held criminally liable. However, according to court documents, the parents of the deceased child then slammed Williams' child care center with a civil lawsuit. On December 11, 2011, the parents of the boy won a compensatory, compensatory judgment of $5.1 million. The plaintiff was granted a FIFA, which allows the defendant's assets to be sold to satisfy the judgment. So see, that's how Diane lost her business. Very unfortunate, but again, when you're messing with people's kids, you got to keep that in consideration. That if you didn't want nothing to happen to your kids and you did your due diligence by basically making sure uh, everybody was cool, collected in that daycare center, you got to do your due diligence. You got to make sure everything is checkpoint. Even if you had to come out your house and check your daycare every single day. And everybody should be going out to lunch at no one time. Staff should be divided up into sections. So I'm going at 12, so I'm going at 1. Okay, but somebody's eyes needed to be on those children. Okay, we have another article that said, um, Records indicated state officials have visited child first over a dozen times and the facility has been cited for not having adequate staffing and incomplete records on the children enrolled now your girl i had my own daycare center also all right i was thinking about putting it in a building establishment but on hindsight i did it for like maybe three or four years well i did it for about four years and i made a very lucrative income but i did it out of my home I had my home set up for any uh fatalities or anything far as uh civil lawsuits and stuff of that nature but people are very fickle and they they tend to run when it's time to pay their bills when it's time to collect for the week even though you're supposed to collect a week up front or the week that you're going into you're supposed to collect that monday you know you had some that paid real well and they just went through hard times instead of the third and your overhead was your overhead cost wasn't that much, but it's just the point of people just lying to you repeatedly about paying their debt that they owe you when they drop off their child, you know, and you know your bills have to go on as well. So I didn't like that, and then I didn't like it on a larger scale. So I kind of bow out. I'm not saying this for everyone, 
But I'm saying, if you're going to keep children, you better keep in mind frame, like, those are your children. You got to do what's right that you feel that you've been trained for, as well as your humanity as well, to make sure those children are safe when you're not safe. You know what I'm saying? saying? But it seems like it was all about the money. But to end this video, we're going to show you how much money was lost for Diane to be this astute business person. The CFO running around now. The CEO and all the secretary of the company mess. All right. These are just vain titles. You get them on your job too. You, they make you seem like you're cream of the crop. But when shit go left, you ain't nothing but another woman or man on a little totem pole ready to get axed. Okay. But going back to another cited article that was done. It says, as pre previously reported, Porsche is being sued by Apex Bank for defaulting on a loan for the child first 24-hour daycare center. Porsche was the guarantor of the loan. See what I'm saying? Diane, how could you use your daughter to co-sign on something that should have been yours from the beginning? You was out here. How Porsche was letting us believe. You was out here moving, shaking, being a boss, worth $100 million, did, 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 boop, 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 boop. But you got your child signing on a loan with you i don't understand that okay where did that come from that's just like you don't mess up your credit so you need a sale bill or a cell phone or you need a electricity or some type of utility to put in your name but you've been just being terrible with paying your bills to them in the past you can't get one under your name so you got to use your child's name that's probably not even out of high school okay you damaging their credit and that's what you did to Portia, Diane. You damaged the credit. Because Portia was the guarantor of the loan that had you call yourself be successful in running your own daycare and owning your own daycare. Okay? Let's read that again. Portia was the guarantor of the loan. Portia, Mother's Diane, and another named individual were listed as the owners of the property. Portia is listed as the secretary of the company according to the records at the Georgia Department of Corporations. As of December 2016, the amount owned has grown to $775,000 due to interest penalties and the bank's attorney fees. The amount of the principal mortgage was $437K. That case is still meandering through the court. All right. The bank filed a subsequent action to foreclose on the property located at 3990 Glenwood Road, Decatur, Georgia. The property sold on February 7, 2017. The next court date on the foreclosed case is May 8, 2017. Now, I can tell you this area in Glenwood, in Decatur, it's a rundown area. It's very low income based. So it's not like these are pristine children Diane is dealing with. These are parents that come from very low to no income, meaning they're she's probably gets uh, state funded money to have these children in her daycare, which is kind of lucrative because that's a uh, that's money coming in all the time. Just as long as the parent do what they need to do to keep that child enrolled in the program, that's money that's gonna definitely be coming to the provider of said day daycare but like i said it, it is a very low income and around that at that time sister so know what she talking about okay because that used to be my old running stumper ground and that area was very run down uh part of a uh the cater or atlanta however you want to see it because it was just 10 minutes from atlanta really but <sighs> i could see why Portia wants that limelight? Because her mother tried to put her in that limelight. She tried to do better. She tried to keep up with the Joneses, which is the Williams' clans, which she shouldn't have been trying to keep up with in the first place. Once that man left her, she should have cut all ties and just did what she had to do for her children. If it wasn't no more than just working for a warehouse, if that's all she could do with her education, she could have found something else to do other than failing miserable as a owner especially when you have to put your children's name on a deed to something you saying you're working for you're bossing up for you're owning you know what I'm saying no that was half Porsche okay that was Porsche stuff pretty much because the banks weren't looking at you Diane they were looking at Porsche 
Because she, her was the only name on there saying she's going to vouch for this loan. And we see how this loan went. Okay, so she's been pulling you out of shit ever since she knew what making a dollar was, Diane. So that's just piss poor parenting. We supposed to help our kids. And then we get in the age of our late 50s, 60s, 70s. Our kids supposed to, by nature, take care of us. Because we did a very good job taking care of them and making sure all of their needs were met. And some of their wants were gotten. You see what I'm saying? So, again, Portia needs help, prayer, and definitely counseling. And her mother really needs to be right there with her as well as the grandmama. Okay, because like I said, the, 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 the apple don't fall too far from the tree. The rotten spoiled apple don't too fall too far from the tree. So Diane had to get her tricks from her mama. What misdeeds, what misconceptions, what wrong upbringing did Diane mom start with? And like I said, it can go on and on and on, back and back and back until the generation curse is broken. Somebody has to stop it. If it's not going to be with Portia, maybe PJ. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But the whole thing to make your mom seem like she's all of this and that. And your favorite snack was bullshit, Portia. Again, I knew this this uh, this uh, whole recipe of a book writing was going to um, be a bunch of bullshit. But I'm just going to see how far you were going to let the bullshit ride. Before somebody's going to call you on your bullshit. Which is me. Okay, because I do live in Atlanta. I knew the areas you were talking about. And they're not as glamorous as you tried to make them seem. And from you just saying your mom was this boss, you know, person. It's not. It's, she didn't make any boss moves that anybody else probably would have done and learned. That, oh, I'm over my head with this situation. Or, I'm not really feeling trying to do the best I can to make sure these children are safe. Or my staff is safe. And they have all the tools and the, the resources they need to do their job completely. Miss Diane didn't do that. You know, she was just looking at that money. Uh, that residential uh, money that was coming from the state. And as long as she kept a certain occupancy of children, you know, in her care, this is the amount she was going to be making. And that's all she was looking for. So I'm like, girl. <laughs> Woo! This book is really going to be something and i'm gonna give it to you from my perspective and right now Portia's trying to floss and it's just nothing but lies at least chapter one is okay because she after she found herself guarantor of a daycare center that was going to be nothing but a flop because nobody was seen liking they were putting their best efforts forward um how could you praise a mother like that Okay, and some other parent lost their child because of the exceeded lack thereof in this facility. Okay, so maybe your mom needs to really, really look at a hard look at herself. Because I'm sure she's, if she has any humanity or compassion or empathy in her body, I'm sure she's, you know, hopefully she's being uh wrecked with grief in a sense about this child that died in her care being on the first day they just left the poor baby okay that's that's ooh mm, i can't say no more i let it soak with you all but that's all i got here guys on that first chapter i will be reading and putting out more stuff as i see fit as my stomach can see fit as i can do my research and show y'all and collect you know visuals so y'all can have an idea of where i'm going with it but yeah she's gonna continue to be miss dot land all right and her mommy is too and so somebody straighten up and fly right okay take accountability but if miss Di my miss diane didn't take accountability because she didn't have a choice but to be forced to pay those people because they were gonna get her one way or the other nope they can't bring the child back but they were gonna make diane feel their pain even if it was in the financial way of feeling pain and um just never forgetting it. So I now I can see the sadness on Diane's face. Um, of what that may feel like. And what other things she may be suffering from. 
but that's all I got. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it. Got a little insight of whether uh, Portia's speaking truth about her book or not. Because those who live in Atlanta have always lived in Atlanta. They already know what the shit is. Okay, we just want to see what part she's going to play truthful and what part she's going to leave out about her and her mom. Okay? Because if you want to mess up your own life, mess up your own life. But don't have people advocating for you and enlisting in your bullshit. And you know it's bullshit. But then when you get caught, you be like, well, this is just for entertainment. No, you mess with these lives of people that look up to you. Should they be looking up to you? No. Okay, but some reason, somehow, they love your dirty draws. They love everything you say, do, and whatever. And when you pitch them against something that's not true, that's bad. That's bad. And I don't like it. So, I have to speak about it with my family members and see what they like or what they feel. Am I wrong for feeling the way I feel? Uh, Am I looking at this totally different? Give me some insight. Enlightenment. Give me some more insightful ways of previewing it. Or previewing it, I should say. But that's all I got, guys. I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.